today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually something I wanted to ask you about, Ted, was the last time we spoke, you were talking about the illegitimate short position in silver. So what makes it illegitimate? And do we see a comparable position like this in gold, for example? Or as you mentioned, is it more of a parallel to take, let's say, an industrial metal like platinum or palladium as an example? Well, to answer your question, what makes it legitimate or illegitimate in this particular case is basically common sense. Okay, you interview, and I'm glad you do, a good number, a a tremendous number uh, of people on this topic, people that are knowledgeable to look into silver and gold and whatever. And I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you've ever interviewed anybody that's been super bearish on silver, that is expecting the price to go down and stay down as far as the eye can see. Please tell me, have you had anybody on who's like super bearish on silver? No, that's correct. Maybe a little bit on gold, but that's, you know, more related to a deflationary crash where the price would go down in accordance with people just, you know, basically getting margin called. And then from there, they still see the price, you know, skyrocketing after that. Okay, fair. That's my understanding. So I guess what I'm getting at is this. Okay, you could talk to you know, a thousand people, 10,000 people, okay, if they knew anything about silver, and most people don't, don't pay attention to it. But of those that pay attention to it, you know, it's really hard to find a bear. It's really hard to find someone that says, this thing ain't going to go up, don't even waste your time thinking about it, etc. So to answer your question with this point, is that what makes the short position illegitimate, the concentrated short position, illegitimate or not, is what good reason would anyone have to be so heavily short on silver, okay, when the whole world can look at it and say, this is a a cheap commodity. This is is probably the cheapest commodity in the world. I'm sure many people have said that. I've said it, certainly. Mm -hmm. But who in their right mind would go heavily short more short in silver than in any other commodity, okay, for an item that everyone considers to be dirt cheap. There is no, I guess the point I'm trying to make, there is no legitimate explanation for why someone would be so heavily short silver. Otherwise, we would have heard it. Yeah, that's a fair point. You wouldn't be asking. It's like, give me, give me a reason. Is it, is it a mining company that's so heavily short? Oh yeah. Which, which mining company? Certainly none in a, in America or Canada or anybody that's listed on the stock exchange because they got to disclose all this stuff under SEC reporting and F and FASB reporting rules. So anybody who's short heavily silver at this point is short for one reason, one reason only, and that's to keep the price down. And in no way, shape, or form can that be considered a legitimate explanation. So, Ted, the natural question that comes to my mind as you're talking about this is, what has changed now? Why would these big shorts let the price run now? You know, what is going to be the mechanics or the motivation behind them finally stepping back and actually going long instead of net short? Well, I don't know if that they're going to be going long because for them to go long, they have to find someone on the sell side or to go mm-hmm. short to them. And I don't, I don't think that's likely by any stretch of the imagination. As far as what is going to change the equation, because this has been going on for decades and, you know, I'm, I'm be the first one to admit it. And there's a natural expectation that something that is continued is going to continue forever. But no, they, on the other hand, you know, things that can't can possibly continue forever will end. And we're at that point, I believe in this, for a number of reasons. One, we're talking about it. You're raising the issue. People are listening. And more and more people who focus in on this issue and see the illegitimacy of a of a concentrated short position and how stupid it is that silver and illegal, that silver would be priced so cheaply to so many other commodities, including its own cost of production. You know, is that curiosity? It's that uh, inquisition that like, why is why is it this way? And, and why can't the COMEX or the CFTC 
or J.P. Morgan or any of these big banks who I've accused of doing this, why don't they speak up? Why don't they say what they're doing and why it's so legitimate? So the point being, it's an indefensible action that they're involved in, criminal, illegal, unethical, cheating, whatever the hell you want to call it, Mm -hmm. okay? And there's no defense coming back, no rebuttal coming back. It's the sound of crickets. All you get is the sound of silence. So something like that, just my common sense, again, tells me if you can't defend something, maybe it's because it's, it's not defendable. And in this case, I don't think this concentrated short position is defendable. And therefore, after they're done whittling it down, and they have been whittling it down, the big eight are now less short than they've been in six years. It's not exactly a chopped liver. It's a harbinger, I believe, of this change that's coming. But when the real change comes, when we go up is when we're going to know whether they add or not. If they don't add, it's going to be so abrupt and so obvious to everybody that this thing wasn't priced right beforehand. And this is the reason it wasn't priced right. We had a, a few, a handful Okay, it's preposterous. We have a handful, no more than eight, really no more than four, okay, big traders that are holding down the price of silver. How illegitimate can you get? It's like that's like the most crooked thing in the world. That's why market manipulation is the number one market crime. It's it's not kidnapping, it's not child molesting, it's not murder, okay? But in terms of the markets, you can't get worse than market manipulation. And that's what's occurring in in COMEX Silver. Mm -hmm. So another point that you bring up in the article, Ted, is that the Bank of America's OTC derivatives position from December 31st, 2020 to March 31st has grown dramatically. So are they almost the new JP Morgan of the market? Not quite. There's only one J.P. Morgan. So let's be realistic. There's no one is in J.P. Morgan's class and caliber when it comes to uh, gold or silver and, and other markets as well. I, I don't follow all the markets, but I can tell you J.P. Morgan's the kingpin when it comes to gold and silver. And I doubt anybody could fill their uh, their shoes. What the article about uh, Bank America early in the year was about and was further confirmed with a subsequent release of the quarterly derivatives report by the Treasury Department's OCC, Office of the Control of the Currency. Basically, my interpretation that that give you the bottom line is that J.P. Morgan snookered Bank America by inducing them or allowing them or permitting them to borrow physical silver, 300 million ounces altogether, uh, another 100 million ounces, I think, by Citibank that was borrowed from J.P. Morgan. And basically, this is the silver that came into all the ETFs over the last 14, 15 months or so. And it's, 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 it's basically owned by other entities now that are affiliated with J.P. Morgan. But the bottom line is that Bank America, as far as I can see, and, and Citibank, are are on the hook. They borrowed combined 400 million ounces of physical silver from J.P. Morgan and J.P. Morgan's affiliates. And uh, now they're on the hook to return this borrowed silver, this 400 million ounces someday. And when they go to return it and it's not available, they're going to have to pay up Okay, to whatever price you can you can imagine in order to return the silver or make a financial settlement with J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan, you know, put these guys deeper into the short hole than could be imagined with this leasing transaction. And by the way, I should point out that J.P. Morgan, which was the biggest short in silver and gold year after year after year after taking over Bear Stearns in 2008, J.P. Morgan has skated out the back, slipped out the back jack when it comes to the short position in COMEX Silver. They are no longer short. They haven't been short COMEX Gold or Silver in more than a year. 
and they're sitting on a massive amount. Of, I say 1.2 billion ounces of of silver and 30 million ounces of gold. They are prepared to make and position J.P. Morgan's in position to make a god awful amount of money when this thing goes up, and they have no you know real short liability at all because they bought back all their shorts long ago and in the process double crossing the existing and remaining big shorts uh, who are also trying their best to get out of their short position so jp morgan is in a class by themselves no one can be compared to them Absolutely. So something that obviously you look at quite a bit is the commitment of traders report. And it's been brought up on the show by a couple guests that have said that this is possible that the data that comes out on the commitment of traders report is unreliable or manipulated. What do you think about those claims, Ted? Horse poop. It's like if you understood the methodology, how the report itself, the commitment of traders report is conducted, is constructed, is it's probably the most reliable report of all for this reason. Mm -hmm. There's only about 200 some odd, we'll say 200 traders that qualify as being large traders. A large trader in silver is anybody who holds more than 150 contracts. A large trader in gold is anybody who holds more than uh, 200 contracts, okay? So there's only about, I'm using round numbers, 200 of these traders, say, in silver or gold. Hey, keeping track of them, they're, they're required by law, the traders, to report, okay, their positions on a daily basis to the exchange and ultimately to the CFTC, who gets the information from the exchange. It's all electronic nowadays. It's like everything is digital, and the, the information is transmitted, if not daily, many times a day. But basically, it's you know a fail-safe system because, as you know, in commodities, there has to be a long for every short and vice versa. So between the reality of that, the long and short having to exist, and the, the small number, 200 is not a lot to keep track of electronically, it, constructing the CFTC report is, is like a piece of cake. It's not like you know, constructing the uh, monthly employment uh, statistics or housing starts or, you know, any of the big economic data that we all look at. It's a, it's a very tiny sampling of participants. They are required by law to publish and communicate and, and disseminate to the exchange every day what their positions are. And if they don't, they get in trouble. So it's a, a report. And plus, it's like there's a safety feature here, because if, if a long, for instance, or a short were mit to misrepresent themselves, it would be a, a misbalance. It would, it, it would be looking automatically, why doesn't this mathematical equation balance? Somebody must be reporting wrong. So anyone who says, that the uh, commitment of traders report is bogus or you can't believe it or it's manipulated. They are like the dumbest clucks in the, in the world. Uh, I have a different word in mind, but it's like <laughs> it, there's no basis for it whatsoever. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Of course, the last time you and I spoke was in February, and that was right around the time, let's say, the silver squeeze was just starting. So do you think that the silver squeeze itself has awakened part of the market to the monetary side of silver? Well, I don't know about monetary. I don't know what 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 you know what that entails. Look, I I think you know the Wall Street, the Reddit Wall Street silver movement. I mean, has has got to raise awareness as does you know all the the commentary interviews on your shows and others. It's like there's no question that the awareness is growing. There's also no question that it represents an extremely tiny percentage of the investing public. And the reason I think that is uh, good or potentially uh, dramatic is because there's plenty of room, okay, for more people to come in and become aware of what's going on simply because there's so few of them right now. But the numbers are growing. The publicity, the amount of talk and commentary that I see points to you know, more and more people picking up the silver standard. And from what I can see, uh, particularly with the Wall Street silver crowd, uh, the Reddit crowd, 
they're not interested in selling. They're they're interested in buying because they think the price is cheap and they're correct. I don't know if they completely understand why it's so cheap, you know, the concentrated short position, et cetera. But you can be sure that they don't look like they're going away anytime soon. Certainly lower prices doesn't seem to have much impact. They don't seem to be quaking in their boots. Not that it can, I don't think it can fall that much after what it's already fallen. So I think the sky's the limit. I think everything is aligned. And it goes back to your question of just a little bit ago, to what's going to prompt this thing to change this manipulation. It's all these things. There's like a thousand different things that are, you know, zeroing in on the four or eight big crooks on the COMEX, the big cheaters, and their days are numbered. I can't tell you the exact day that the jig is going to be up for them, but it, it, it's coming pretty soon. It's uh, I, don't, I don't think with all these things going on, it's coming very soon.